Now this was an emotional chapter, as number six's giant energy form brings the house down on Koichi. And of course you have newscasters flying about, reporting on everything that's happening. The population is getting worried, as they should, with so much unknown bull going on in their neighborhood. There's no way anyone wouldn't be worried about exactly what's going on. And their town was already a place that didn't really have a great amount of protection. With this, <sighs> I'd be scared witless. But for Koichi, he ends up in this blackness, just kind of lying there. He doesn't know what's going on around him. He's not sure. He just feels almost like he's dying pretty much and then who should come to him in this moment of need in this infinite darkness but his master knuckle duster and at first it seems like it's just a vision like he's just being visited in a desperate moment by his master but then we pick up with soga who is of course worried he can see the massive destruction where he's at and they're quite a distance away after he had saved knuckle duster but he knows that he can't really do anything where he's at he has to take care of the old man so he gets out some bandages to treat pops's injuries but pops doesn't respond and the way knuckle duster is slouched over it seems like he might have you know and even in what seems like Koichi's dreamscape, where he's hovering between life and death, possibly, because he's bleeding out a lot because of his injury. He starts to think, okay, this is that, like, limbo between life and death, right before one of us is about to move on. So, it gives you the implication that, you know, while Koichi might not die during the course of this chapter, I mean, he's the main character, it'd be pretty rough to have him die at this point. It almost feels like Knuckle Duster has already kind of bit it, and this is him giving one last moment of inspiration to Koichi. And that would really kind of suck. If that ends up being the case, I won't lie, that'll be a rough one if we end up losing Knuckle Duster by the end of things. But in this limbo world of darkness, Knuckle Duster kind of makes it seem like, eh, Koichi, you sure you're dying or anything like that? You sure you're not alright? Try to get up. And so Koichi tries to get up, only for his arm to be in an immense amount of pain. So Knuckle Duster tells him, well, your powers have been fairly malleable up until now. The way you're kind of able to project energy in different areas of your body. You've been doing that a lot more and more. And uh, he suggests something that, because the way Koichi's powers always seem to work, is that he's just able to mold energy basically around his body, just along the surface of his body, almost as though it's like an energy field. And, you know, I'm starting to realize, okay, that's how his power actually works. It isn't just about the, you know, gliding as he presses his body parts to, like, a surface, or just shields, or even his shooty go blam where he expels energy it's a lot more than that as we see in this chapter as knuckle duster suggests okay you have this injury to your arm it's obviously broken create a cast a shell you know mold it around your broken arm in order to help it mend to stop the bleeding and all that and you know while at first koichi thinks oh i don't know if i could do that bam he does it just by thinking of it, he does it. I mean, what else would he need in order to do something like that? And just like that, his arm is a little bit better. And then he thinks, okay, I mean, my whole body kind of hurts. And then he ends up coating his entire body with that protective aura that he always had. You know, something akin to the way that Captain Celebrity does. The way his quirk works. Which, again, is a great implication. You know, you know how Cap's ability works. The moment Koichi starts thinking it along those lines, he's able to apply it a little bit better. Focus a little bit more. Spread out what he usually uses for his slide and glide to just 
create this protective layer all across of his body, making it so that he can at least get up and move. So Knuckle Duster's okay, pretty good skill. Okay, next thing you need to do, find a way to escape. So Koichi starts making his way through this wild darkness, trying to find his way out, asking Knuckle Duster if he has any advice. And Knuckle Duster says to him, like, kid, you haven't really needed my advice for a good long time now. You've been doing this on your own for a while. And Koichi, being very modest about his own abilities, despite the fact that he's grown exponentially over the course of the last few chapters. He's just like, oh no, I couldn't have gotten this far without you, Master. You know, it's been rough, but it hasn't been all bad. But Knuckle Duster says again, it's just like, but kid, the thing that's gotten you the furthest was your own ingenuity, your own mental state, your own thoughts, your ability to plan on the fly. That's your greatest strength more than anything else. And that's true. Koichi's mind, despite the fact that he lacks in certain areas, he more than makes up for it on just pure instinct. That instinct tends to get him in trouble in social situations, but in life or death, he's a savant. But then Koichi hits a wall. Literally. <laughs> he feels a wall. But Knuckle Duster says, hey, nice job making it this far, kid. And Koichi thinks, okay, okay, so that must mean that I'm actually, you know, at the point where I'm gonna die. He thinks it as, oh, okay, this is as far as I go in life. And as Koichi almost gives a eulogy about, you know, it's great that I got to see you at the end of things, having one last chat, my life was pretty good, I guess I did an amazing job up until now, Knuckles Duster's just like, yeah, no, none of that. It's time to bring out the Knuckles, boy. It's time to gear, pound some villains. Much to Koichi's shock and surprise at the implication behind that. And the next thing you see is number six still just slamming into the building where Koichi should have been. As he's determined to make sure Koichi is dead. No more half measures, no more fucking around. He's gonna make sure the little cockroach called the crawler is dead and bloody at his fist. Like a kid throwing a tantrum and just smashing a sandcastle to oblivion. That's what number six is doing. But then suddenly, four beams of light just came bursting out of the rubble and within that rubble you see a figure and that figure is holding up a fist with four shining knuckles and thus you see standing before number six is the visage of the crawler knuckles at the ready with his abilities on his knuckles it is the birth of the crawler's knuckle style. And again, I say this every development we get from Koichi. Because the thing about where this story has gone is that every time I think, okay, maybe this is as far as Koichi goes. This is the best he can put out. And it's already enough. It's already as good as it can get for this kid. He's done phenomenally up till now but he always manages to pull something else out but it's never far-fetched because it's always an application of what we've already seen from him before and that's the thing that was always the thing about how mutants in the x-men kind of worked is that you had secondary evolutions or you'd find more out about certain characters mutations like people always laugh about the characters like jubilee oh she fires fireworks from her fingertips it's like yeah because she's young and inexperienced over time she's pretty much firing laser concussive blasts out of her fingertips it's just like oh she's firing off fireworks it's just like dude you you don't stand in front of fireworks that's still dangerous that can still kill somebody. Yes, it's pretty, but you don't have that point blank at your face and make it out okay from that. And she only had the potential to get 
stronger. Same thing with Cyclops Eye Blast. It's just like, yeah, it's man is shooting straight up concussive laser blast from his eyes. There's nothing weak about that. And the different applications that he grew to have for it, incredible. I always love the idea of X-Men and mutants because when you see someone who is skilled and you have to follow this character and their ability, leave it as something that seems very simple and have it grow over time. Think about how it can work in different varied ways. Hell, that's why you've gotten stuff like healing factors and different abilities over time for various different characters because you thought about how those characters' powers could grow. Sometimes it gets a little absurd, but the best powers are the ones that seem to be a natural extension of what a character could already do. And this, from Koichi, it's so simple. Just make it so that you have this extra concussive force on your knuckles. Create a protective barrier around your body. It's still an extension of those weird bits of energy he'd have from his three points of contact when he goes sliding around. He's creating this outward aura around his, the three points that he touches to the ground where he can just reject certain things so that he can slide on the floor. It's still energy coming out of points of his body. Why couldn't he just Bring that out of any point of his body. Why couldn't he just make a protective barrier on his body? Why does it have to be a temporary thing? Why not uh, permanently affix it to injuries, to broken bones? Why not have it strengthened when you throw a punch? Why not have it give some extra oomph to your right hook? I think it's so absolutely phenomenal that the growth of Koichi's abilities comes from the idea of why couldn't he do this with how his powers already work. It takes his abilities that we've already seen and just puts a different application to it that still works towards what he's already able to do. That's what makes it so believable. It doesn't fly in the face of everything we've seen before. It just adds to how capable we've seen this character be before and applies it in a different light. So honestly, I've gushed enough, but I can't wait to see what happens next. This is definitely the last chapter of the year, but what a chapter to go out on the year on. I don't see this series going on for more than a couple more months, because really, we are definitely in the last bit of things for all of this. Like, this is... This is a hell of a moment to have. Like, this is a beautiful homage to the relationship between Koichi and Knuckle Duster. And I think this is a great note to finish the battle with number six. I feel like it'll really bring everything to a head. Now, with this, I think this should be the thing that helps Koichi maybe take down number six or at least damage him enough for some other hero to come in and finish the job but that's it this feels like it has to be the final stretch anything more and you've probably pushed things a little too far but i feel like i've said that before again and they've managed to outdo themselves again so let me know what do you think do you think we're really starting to head into the end game or do you think there's still more that they could do let me know your thoughts and theories in the comment section below and if you like this video do all the youtube stuff i ain't your daddy and i'm certainly no knuckle duster but i hope you'll subscribe like all that good stuff and until next time i've been dudes this then and i will see you in the next video Bye bye